Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're going to stop this from happening. Right now, if our mesh goes even the tiniest bit outside the screen, we crash. Simple as that. So today, we're going to implement the clipping algorithm we talked about in the last video. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get started. So. First off, in our Vertex class, we're going to add two methods just to help make clipping a little bit easier. First off, we're going to have a public Vertex lerp function that's going to lerp between this Vertex and some other Vertex by some float lerp amount. And we're going to return a new Vertex with some parameters. The nice thing is, since our mPosition and mTextCords already have a lerp function, this is going to be pretty easy. We're just going to turn impos.lerp to other.getPosition by lerp amount and mtextcoords.lerp to other.getTextCoords by lerp amount. And there we go. Simple as that. Now the other method we're going to add is a more general getter. Right now we have get x and get y. So we're going to add a method to get by index. And I already wrote this out off screen just because it takes a lot of typing and it's pretty easy. But essentially, we're going to have pass in some index. If it's 0, we get x, 1, y, 2, z, 3, w. And if it's out of that range, we just throw an exception. Simple as that. So, we're going to have a new method in our render context. It's going to be private void clip polygon component. So, this is our new method. It's going to, of course, clip a polygon. And it's going to take in a list of vertex for all the vertices in this polygon we're clipping. It's going to take in some integer component index because we're going to clip some components, so we'll pass in 0 for x, 1 for y, 2 for z, 3 for w, but we're not really going to clip on w. And we're also going to pass in some... Yeah, I can go ahead and do it now. Some float component factor. This is something we multiply every component by when we clip, which might seem a bit weird, but you'll see how that's useful in a moment. And finally, we're going to have some list of vertices for the result. So this is a list we're going to, well, put all our final clipped vertices into. And this method is pretty much just going to use the same algorithm we talked about in the last video. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to have some vertex, previous vertex. This is going to be the very first thing we create. This will be the last vertex we looked at in our process of clipping. So the previous vertex, this is going to be, well, it'll be vertices.get vertices.size minus 1. So the very last vertex in the list. We're going to have some float, previous vertex, and yeah, I'll say previous component. Sure. Uh, that, that's a valid name, I think. So previous component, that'll be vertice ease. Well, actually, I should say previous vertex dot get, because we're getting component now, at the component index. And we're going to multiply by the component factor. Which again, I'll explain in a moment. You'll see very shortly how that's useful. And finally, we're going to have some boolean that I'm going to say previous inside. So this will be whether or not the previous vertex was inside our clipping range. And this will be true if our previous component is less than or equal to previous vertex dot get position dot get w. And this is all based on the equation we talked about in the last video. And this is this is the basic data we're going to need for all our clipping. So now, we're just going to need to iterate through the list with this. So we're going to have an iterator. I'm going to call just I, an iterator of vertex, and I'm going to call it. That equals vertices.iterator. And while it whoops, has next, we're going to say vertex current vertex equals text. There we go it.next, 
And after that, it's basically the same process we talked about before, except, well, we're going to be creating them for the current vertex rather than the previous. So that's why I'm copying and pasting here. So rename to current. Current vertex dot get that. Current component is less than. Wait, current component is less than or equal to current vertex dot that there. And this is the basic setup for our loop. It's a little bit of code to set up, but once we're here, it's real. The logic itself is really simple. So if our current vertex is inside, well, then we're going to say result.add current vertex. Oh, and I almost forgot. Before I forget, at the end of each iteration, we should probably set, oh yeah, we should definitely set previous vertex to current vertex, previous component to current component, and previous inside to current inside. That way, that data just stays consistent. So there. So if our current vertex is inside, we add it. That's the most basic thing we can do. Now, but as we know, the interesting case is if, what if we're not inside? Well, really, what we want to know is if we're inside and our previous vertex is not inside, or vice versa. So I'll do an X or here. So this will return true if current is inside is true, whoops, if, if current inside is true, or previous inside is true, but they're not both true. Because if this is the case, then we're going to have to do some clipping. And this means we're going to have to calculate the lerp amount. Now, if you remember the equation we talked about in the last video, the way we're going to calculate the lerp amount is a little bit odd, but it works. So previous vertex dot get position dot get w minus previous component and all this over we'll have to do this in double parentheses this same thing again previous position dot get w minus previous component minus I'll put this on a new line too current vertex dot get yeah, get position dot get w. Sorry, I confused there for a second. Minus current component there, and that is how we calculate the lerp amount. Again, we went over all the math for how that works in the last video. So if you're curious about where this is all coming from, look there. And after we got that, it's pretty easy. All we have to do, if you remember, is do a linear interpolation. So we're going to lerp. So we're just going to say previous vertex dot lerp to current vertex by the lerp amount. And there we go. That is all there is really to our clipping algorithm. So from here on out, it's really just setting things up so this is nice, easy to use, and done automatically. But now that we have our core clipping algorithm in place, how can we have it applied automatically? so we can draw an object just like we are now and have it, well, work like this. Find out next time in the conclusion of our clipping saga. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.